Right now it is. What's up, everybody? Hello. 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 Is the Hello. dog's name actually Mister now? I guess it never had an official name. K9000 yeah. was a model number, so. Mister Dog. Uh, you're an eccentric guy who has taken his wife to the pyramids of Egypt. What's this? Mm. Uh, Is that so eccentric? Yeah, I guess kind of. I mean, if you're an Egyptian, it's not. Oh, yeah. That is not trick. Yeah. I bet most Egyptians don't even go to the pyramids. They're like, you know, just like we don't go to like the sites in Detroit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Imagine the people who work at that Wendy's that looks right at it. Or whatever that fast food place is. Yeah. The uh, Pyramid Cafe. Pyramid Burger. Yeah. Hey, this is for when everyone, when anyone makes a zinger, I can do this air horn noise. Mm. It makes a it, it makes a weird it makes a weird bu buzzing sound before you pre press it though. Yeah, it like cuts out your mic. It sounds like a vacuum. <laughs> oh well. Okay, then I'll I'll delete it. Uh, what's this guy's name? I feel like uh, Fred. Uh, Fred Bunker. Glit Bunker. Mm -hmm. Glit Bunker. Bunkerstein. Bunkerstein. Fred Bunkerstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> you are an eccentric guy named Fred Bunkerstein who has taken his wife to the pyramids of Egypt for your wedding anniversary. I mean, is that really grounds for divorce? Oh, whoa, whoa, I didn't read far enough ahead. Divorce? Yeah. Already? Well, it's it's that well, anniversary. You're... It says, while your wife considers filing for divorce. Uh-oh. Oh, this is not like a honeymoon. It's an anniversary. Okay. What anniversary is it? Probably the third or fourth. Pyramids of Las Vegas, yeah. <laughs> This yeah. reminds me of a movie I saw. Vegas. Oh, Dennis While Menace. Your wife Remember it? Oh, that's filing a good for a callback, divorce, Misha. You look around the pyramids and come across a mummy tomb. You open the tomb and see a mummy. You start taking pictures of the mummy, but Brendan Fraser approaches you and says, Don't do that. You ask, Why not? Suddenly, the mummy wakes up. Ooh. It's alive. The mummy is back in its coffin. What the hell happened? Why am I back in my coffin? Brendan tells you to go away and he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Oh. He asks you if you want to go with him to get some ice cream. You say no, because five? you're tired. What? We're tired? Too tired for ice cream? With Brendan Fraser too? Especially like right after the mummy. Unless it's like, this is like the mummy four. He's like, yeah, yeah probably, they brought me probably, back and I'm pretty I, depressed about it. I feel like it's present day Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Yeah, but no wonder our wife wants to divorce us. What a loser. Brendan Fraser is awesome, but it's so sad to see him in like recent interviews. Yeah. Why? Because he's so sad. He's like, uh, My career I sucks. yeah, I remember he was like talking up this like, uh, he was on some TV show on some like uh, off network, some, some weird channel I have never even heard of. And uh, he was talking about, yeah, it's great. Uh, you know, this guy's got a vision and it's like, he's just talking about this garbage show and you know, he's just like so defeated that he's yeah. on You ignore it. Brendan Fraser because he no longer has any power in Hollywood. Oh, he's in Doom Patrol? You ask the mummy how he came to be in this pyramid. It says, I was brought here by a Pharaoh and buried here. Mm. But when you left, I woke up from my coffin and decided that I wanted to visit the outside world again so I could meet people. Ah. Mm. It's very true to life. This is kind of like a Brendan Fraser movie, Encino Man. Yeah. What, what is Doom Patrol? Uh, it's a, like a DC, kind of like the uh, Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. But yeah, just a different different DC mm. like band of uh, renegades. So this mummy wants to mingle? Yeah. It doesn't want to be bound by the old ways. It's a pyramid with a coffin, not a sarcophagus. Yeah, that's a good... <laughs> I got this coffin, you know, I upgraded. My sarcophagus yeah. was a, a 
10,000 years old, so I decided to upgrade to this uh, yeah. goose down to the feather. Ambassador. <laughs> yeah, the Ambassador. Uh, uh, $1.3 million coffin. That is luxurious. <laughs> I don't know. I think Brendan Fraser might have oh, yeah. uh, blown all that money, dare I say? I yeah, so. I don't know. I don't know how much he got in the first place from it. Mm -hmm. You say to the mummy, Brendan Fraser is looking for someone to go get ice cream with. You two should go together and become friends. Greater than you agree. Sure, you agree. The next day, okay. you and Brendan leave the studio and head to the Egyptian desert. As you drive through the desert, you notice something strange. There is a large group of people standing on top of the tallest mountain in the area. A sand dune? Whoa, when was there a, <laughs> yeah, when was there a mountain here? I said comb the desert. <laughs> we ain't found shit. <laughs> what happened to the wife? What wife? Yeah, oh what yeah, wife? our wife. Yeah, well, that was the one that was divorced. Oh yeah, well she's looking for a divorce. Yeah, so she could go to hell I guess. Yeah, well, we're you friends know with Brendan Fraser now. And a mummy. Let's see. The next you and Brendan, so, okay. Yeah, I imagine the mummy's probably tagging along. Or the mummy is our wife. She just, like, desecrated a pharaoh's grave <laughs> to try oh. to get closer to us. So she's like, huh, now you'll be friends with me if you think I'm a mummy. Your wife finds a single divorce <laughs> in a nearby tube, yeah. Our wife is definitely the B plot. The A plot in this the story is Brendan Fraser and the Mummy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and a group of people, they're probably fans. <clears throat> well, mm -hmm. hopefully. Or maybe it's all connected, guys. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you see the idiot. mummy is at the top of the mountain already. He is talking to a woman. That woman is your wife. Awkward, Brendan Fraser says. The next day, you arrive at the mountain. You find out that the man and woman are actually aliens called the reptilians. Oh, they have been whoa. visiting Earth for centuries, but they were never accepted as visitors. Now, however, okay. they think that humans are too primitive to understand their civilization. They don't like being told what to do. Dude. That's it? It's just a civilization full of reptiles who don't like being told what to do? I get it. Sounds like America. <laughs> Show them over your cat, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Like, why? That's a pretty good reason why you're not accepted. You ask your wife why she never told you she was a reptilian. She answers, because I thought you would hate me. And I know how much you care about me, so I just Bingo. kept it hidden. So what does this all mean, you ask her. She explains that there is a great deal more to her than meets the eye. More than being a reptilian alien that's leaving the earth with a mummy? Please, elaborate. How did she hide the scales and tails? She told us it was an STD. Well, that, there's a lot you can do with makeup. I mean, that's <laughs> that too, yeah. And maybe, uh, you know, we are eccentric. Maybe we liked her look. We're like, oh, she's just kind of interesting looking. Tom Cruise also was in The Mummy, wasn't he? Yeah, the reboot. The, the reboot, but it, really I think it out. didn't do well. No. Some humans love being told what to do. But they're very small percentage of people you say i always knew you were cold-blooded then turn to wink at brendan and expect him to giggle at your sarcastic joke instead he looks disgusted oh. he says oh. that's disgusting <laughs> if you ever do anything like that again i will kill you right now oh. it oh isn't my funny God. anymore jim zero sense of humor from brendan wow. Fraser. zero he sounds hard to work with yeah this is why he's not oh. getting gigs anymore it's because people are like, Jesus Christ, Brandon, yeah. Just a uh, joke. I was just, you know, t trying to yeah. tell a joke at craft services here. I don't think I want to be friends with him anymore. No. 
Yeah, I did know that, Misha. Yeah. That does add to the charm a little bit. It's like, okay. But also, it's kind of like, could die. But yeah, Jackie Chan does too, and he'll he's almost died a couple times. At the slightest oh, disagreement, yeah. he decide, he threatens to kill people, yeah. And Buster Keaton, he does all his own stunts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to this day. You apologize to Brendan Fraser, but point out his severe attitude maybe has something to do with why is no longer considered for a list roles. Afterwards, list you decide to take a break from the movie set and spend time with your family. When oh, you return home, you realize that you forgot to tell them where you went. Your wife says, we'll all be fine. We can still make it to the movies even without you. You reply, no, we won't. Oh. oh. If I miss it, we all miss it. Yeah. The computer is in a disagreeable mood today. Yeah, yeah. The dummy new movie. Yeah, it's a comedy starring Brendan Fraser and a real life mummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Folks, he's a reptilian from another planet that was never accepted. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, I don't like being told what to do, human. Not hey, like your race. Hey, Brendan, I bet that's cold-blooded. Don't you ever fucking joke in front of me ever again! Yeah. <laughs> He's the dummy. <laughs> hey, Mr. Fraser, can you sign my copy of Encino Man? Uh, that was probably his best movie. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tony, your video is very laggy. If you want to oh, leave and come back, yeah. Maybe. Maybe I'll leave and come back. Mm -hmm. The month before introducing Fred. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not shitting too much on Brendan Fraser, but Tony had been... yeah. There you go. Much better. Would you say shit on Brendan Fraser? You got it. <laughs> Uh, okay. I don't, I don't get the feeling he'd be the kind of person to be upset about, like, not having a big career anymore. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm not he... saying he's not famous. He's just not as famous as he was. And yeah. sometimes that's worse. Yeah. He's definitely been to the top, which how few people can say it. That's good, man. You want to climb up Everest. You don't want to live up there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, good point. Wow, good, good point. Wow, that's a great analogy, Jim. Did yeah. you make that up? Yeah. Wow, that's great. That is. It's cold at the top, baby. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good saying, Jim. I'm just kind of, I just want to take it in. Yeah, I'm just soaking in that. That's could be a that could be a bumper sticker. I, yeah, I'm gonna type that in. Uh... Okay. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, console Brendan Fraser and be like, hey. Wait, you don't want to, uh, you want to go to Everest. You don't want to live up there. Yeah, you, or you want to, you want to climb on, everyone wants to uh, climb on Everest, but no one wants to. What did you say again, Jim? Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> you want to climb Everest, not live up there. Yeah. Mm hmm that's <laughs> the director of the rest of the script has lizard people <laughs> yeah <laughs> look this is like Tommy boy trying to get a saying right yeah I'll take that risk Bash <laughs> you console Brendan Fraser and tell him you want to climb Mount Everest not live up there Greater than you go to the movies alone, you decide to stay home and watch the movies alone. Oof. After How watching lovely. the movie, you go to bed. In the morning, you wake up and realize that you haven't eaten breakfast yet. Ugh. You say, maybe I'll eat later today. A couple hours later, you hear the sound of a car engine. What? Mm. It's our wife about to peel out with all her stuff. Yeah. Have you ever been to the movies alone? I have. Yeah? I've been uh, when I first a handful moved, of times. When I first moved to the, uh, Seattle, I didn't know anybody, and I went. And a uh, hundred times, Bash? What? It was also one of the... It was just like a, it was like in the daytime in Seattle, and it was like a very weird collection of people. I, I remember in particular, 
a guy who brought food, including like a plate. <laughs> what? In his backpack. Yeah. <laughs> like he had a backpack and he brought, he had a plate and he <laughs> took it out and put food on it and started eating. And I was like, wow. Yeah. It's At that Seattle. point, you just got to do a little golf clap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You beat the system, buddy. You eat those pork chops. Mm hmm. Bash has a lot of movie theater stories as well. I've yelled at people in movie theaters. I lost my temper in a movie theater once. Whoa. Because this guy, this guy behind me kept laughing. Like, the, him and his friend kept Can laughing. You listen talking. closely. It sounds like your Subaru Forester running in the garage. You call out to <laughs> Brendan, but he is nowhere to be found. Uh -oh. You wonder if he had oh, gone no. off somewhere to work. Oh, no. Then no. you hear a loud noise coming from the front door. You run to the window and see a truck going straight towards the house. Oh no! Your wife calls out, get inside, and you rush into the house. Uh... So, is that Brendan Fraser with the exhaust on the, no, in the, the garage? Maybe it's the mummy. I bet oh, yeah. it's the mummy. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So what did you do to the kids? Oh yeah, did you yeah. yell at them and throw things? Uh, no, this is when I was an adult. Oh, let me, uh, uh, <laughs> get in the chopper, get in the bathroom, go now. I remember when I was a kid going to the movies, my cousin made me smuggle in everyone's like drinks and, and oh, candy no. and stuff uh, in my cargo shorts. Yeah. <laughs> I was so nervous. I would wear like, yeah, winter jackets, like even during the summer movie. My mom taught me that. She would like big old zip ziplock bags full of candy. Like we, we'd hit up. Your like, mom taught you that? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I, I am not paying when there's like a mire on the way to the theater. Yeah. Yeah, I was never a fan of movie theater candy. I like popcorn. Yeah, popcorn is the one exception, usually. That's that. yeah. Popcorn, I always finish before, like, the movie starts. I know. Yeah. And then you're sitting there with a, a tub of shame. Yeah. Tony went to Sister Act 2 to 15 times. <laughs> that is true. What? That's a true story. What? Uh, one summer, what? because when I was underage... The mummy, who is driving oh, the car, oh, crashes closer, into closer. the garage where Brendan Fraser is sitting in the Subaru. <laughs> both cars burst into flames, but the mummy rescues both of them. You try to save Brendan, but he is dead before you can reach him. No. What? I just yeah. said the mummy saved them. But then he uh, died later. Yeah, so anyway, it wasn't 15 times. It was probably like... Maybe like 10 times, 8 or 10 That's times. That's still Let's a say lot, eight. Tony. Yeah, well, because what would happen is... Uh, <laughs> I wanted to go see all these R-rated movies, me and my friends, you know? Uh -huh. So, and we weren't old enough to, and they were strict about it. So what we would do is, if you, like, you you could figure out the timing of the movie, they staggered it. So you'd buy a ticket for six, Sister Act 2, and then go in the theater and wait there for, like, a couple minutes until your movie was about to start. Because you had to wait, because they checked, at the theater we went to, they checked, like, the hallways to see if kids were sneaking. Uh... But after a while, they wouldn't. You know, like after a couple minutes. So we sit there through the previews for Sister Act 2 and then just leave and then go to see whatever movie. So I've seen the beginning of Sister Act 2 like so many times. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember the first time we did was was with Rapid Fire, the uh, Bruce Lee, the movie with Bruce Lee's son, Brendan Lee. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And the other thing, when I was, I was watching the movie Election, and these guys, and this is when I was in college, like my first or second year of college. And there are these, these guys behind us and they're speaking another language, which is really what drove me crazy because I didn't know what they were saying and they were talking so loud, you know? And they're just be like, ah, ha, 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 you know, and talking. And I was just like going so, I was getting so angry. And then, fi and I'm not a person that loses my temper, as you guys know. And I, uh, I turned around, I'm like, be quiet, you know, like, wow. for God's sake. Be quiet. And then people in the theater are like, thank you. And then I turned around and then my friend who I've known since I was a kid, like he knows I never do things like this. And he just started laughing uncontrollably. And I did too. <laughs> like, so we're just like sitting there like holding our hands over our mouths because they're like, why did you do that? I'm like, I, like I was just like laughing silently, like super hard. That's amazing. Yeah, wow. but it ruined the movie for me. Oh, oh yeah. Whoopi Goldberg, star of Sister Act. Though it also had Lauren Hill from the Fugees.
Mm -hmm. But good memory, Bash. <laughs> I was sitting, we, I went to a movie with Bash, and it was at a film festival in Seattle, and the theater was pretty much empty. And it was just me, like me sitting next to him. And then right before the movie starts, this guy comes and cr like, again, there's like a hundred empty seats in the theater. Crawls over the, like the we're sitting in, like, in the back The mummy asks if you room. want to see Whoopi Goldberg in Sister Act 2 and you say yes. Greater than you go to the movie set. A few days pass and your wife comes to pick you up from the set of Sister Act 2. Oh, the movie she set. She explains oh. that you have been we're replaced with a films. different actress. Oh. She also mentions that you weren't paid well for your role. Your wife says, oh, this is terrible. God. I'm gonna sue the producers of Sister Act 2 for negligence. So, so it sounds like we're in the industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, so you Tyler. know like in the movie theater, there's like a row of seats and then there's a gap and then there's like a row for the upper, yeah. you know, like. So we were in the, that back row. And so right before the movie starts, like the lights dim, this guy comes over, climbs over the seat to sit next to Besh. <laughs> That's it was hard. just three of us. It was so bizarre. I started laughing, and Besh was so angry. Yeah. Uh, Wait, like a total stranger just wanted to sit next to you? Two? Yeah, just that's... a random dude. Okay. And the theater was like not even close to full. Yeah. It was amazing. That's the spot. I mean, it, I don't even remember what the movie was, but uh, that that was a great story that has stood the test of time. Yeah, it, it wow. was like he was jumping, like he was late. <laughs> Maybe he thought, like, you were his friend. It was dark yeah. in the theater. Oh, yeah. Like, and oh, then yeah, he's like, well, people. it's too awkward if I you know, try to go back now. I never considered that. But he didn't know. He didn't even look at us. You know, that was the weird <laughs> part. <laughs> it was like he was doing the most normal thing in the world. You know, like, someone does something crazy and it makes you wonder if you're, like, the crazy one? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they're so normal about it? Yeah. Just confidence. It would had a crush on Besh. That's amazing. Prompt, uh, you're yeah. at the cinema with a friend, suddenly a man shapes <laughs> over the seats towards you like a spider. Yeah, that would be creepy. Uh, also, yeah, you walked out of Paranormal Activity 2, uh, the only movie I've ever walked out of because it was bad, Transformers 3. Didn't see 1 or 2, but my friends were going to see 3, and I was like, okay, oh, wow. okay, I I'll do it. And then... Uh, 15 minutes in, I was like, this is dog shit. And I walked out and just drove home. And my friends are like, did you leave? And I go, oh, I'm in the bathroom. And then I just, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I'm feeling sick. I gotta go, bye. I walked out of this one Thai comedy movie one time. It was no good. But some of them are. Uh, what what's Thai comedy like? Yeah, is it like physical or more slapsticky? Like ver slapstick or verbal? Um, yeah, it's slapsticky stuff, and there's a lot of like transgender comedy. Is it proper to say? Are you allowed to say "lady boy" or is that offensive now? That's not offensive to them. It may be too. That's American, what I mean. But not to That's them. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, Besh, what a life you could have been living. Milo Forsyth? Who's that? I don't you know, I hire just made a clambering oh. spider named Milo <laughs> Forsyth to be your lawyer. <laughs> you sue the movie studio for replacing you. Greater yeah. than you sue the studio for negligence, you sue the movie studio for negligent hiring and firing. The court rules in favor of you. The yes. court rules in favor of you. You win yeah. one million dollars. Yeah. Your wife oh, wins five hundred thousand oh, dollars. Wow. Milo okay. Forsyth wow, wins two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Wow, this is definitely a store of fantasy because the lawyer usually gets the most. Hmm. That's great. <laughs> you were wrong to hire and fire me. Yeah, we'll teach you. Yeah, you should have never hired me in the first place. That's negligent. <laughs> also, our wife, who's presumably on another planet right now. He's like, I want my share. Human bucks mean nothing to me. I just don't want you to have the full amount. And we're like, damn you, reptilian wife. Well, I mean, she was going to divorce us anyway. Yeah. Is it reptile dollars? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like bugs and grubs. Here's your <laughs> million dollar bag of bugs and grubs. 
I'm Milo Forsyth. I'll get you the bugs and grubs you deserve. Milo throws a victory party for you at a movie theater. Oh, he records oh. the party and promises to post it on the web, but he means his spider web, so nobody <laughs> sees it. A year passes and you and your wife are living happily ever after. Oh, All right, hey. we fixed our marriage. Strange. I think that's a good place to end, but. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wholesome. That's a wholesome. Yeah, we were getting divorced <laughs> at the beginning, and uh, through our shenanigans, our wife was like, I'll stay. Sometimes shenanigans are what you need to save a marriage, kids. Mm -hmm. Or she was probably with that mummy for a while. Yeah, who cares? I realized how good we were. Nisha, it was distract too because that was worth playing in the theater. Uh, for me, you get a couple cheats. As long as you're not cheating all the time, it's all good, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, in a relationship? Yeah, like if it's gonna be like ruin your life, but you're still like, eh. But then if you do it and it's like, oh, okay, this wasn't that good. You can, Wait, what are you, you talking about? You can slide back in. Like I'm, I'm kind of like, you get slide. Is Alan right behind you? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> in this situation where this reptilian woman finds a reptile mummy and uh, So she's... you're giving her allowances because she's an alien? Yes. And just All cause, right. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like monog I mean, I'm pretty pro monogamy on that level. No, no, no. I'm not open, but monogamish. You know, monogamish. Monogamish. That's a great word. <laughs> That's not. Man, a, I didn't come up with that. Now I feel pressure to make up something. You guys are coming up with great stuff today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's a new character? Anybody Everett got a prompt? And monogamish. Yeah. From the creator of Blackish. A new comedy series. I'm gonna Google monogamish. We should call the main character Dennis because that's what Biz suggest, uh, suggested. Yeah, let's do it. You are Dennis. What's Dennis up to? Mm. Uh, do we want to take this to Spider Guy? Yeah. You're at the cinema with a friend. Spider Guy, Spider Guy. Oh, the relationship calmness Dan Savage coined yep. the term monogamish. I just like couldn't think of his name. Yeah. Early 2010s. Oh, and he didn't there's capitalize a, on it. There's a documentary called Monogamish. Uh, Dennis Rodman? Yeah, why not? You're Dennis Rodman. And okay. you are a uh, former NBA, NBA All-Star. Yeah, specifically, Misha. He played for the Detroit Pistons. Rodman played for the Pistons? Yeah, that's where he started you are Dennis out. Dennis Rodman, I didn't know former that. NBA yeah. All Star. That was before he went kind of crazy. Oh. Yeah, North Korean ambassador to Mars. That too. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Hello! What's the movie you were watching? Space Jam. Okay. Yeah, Rodman and the Pistons. Actually, the Pistons were known as the bad boys because they would beat the shit out of all their opponents. Yeah. They kind of defined the way the modern NBA is now where they call fouls for anything. It's because of the Pistons. Of the or like the early 90s, late 80s. Uh, did you see there's a Michael Jordan documentary where they talk about that? Like, I think it was made recently. I think it was made like last year. Yeah, The Last Dance. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but they talk about that. I I've, I've seen that segment of it where they talk about how the Pistons were, they had a yeah. huge feud, feud with the Bulls. And Michael uh, Jordan hates them to this day. Yeah, I can imagine. I didn't know the shit that they pulled. Yeah. Bash, Who does I don't he hate, though? They're none of the same players that he played against. No, I mean, he, Just... going back to that time, he hates them. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. Uh, they're remaking Space Jam, right? With LeBron. Yeah. Who knows what that'll come out though? Space Jam with Tim Burton. <laughs> you are at a cinema oh, with a friend watching Space Jam. Suddenly, a man clambers over the seats towards you like a spider. He's got a baseball cap on backwards and is dressed in an outfit that looks very much like a clown. Oh, what the fuck? He says to you. 
You fucking white trash ass hash 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 hash. Oh, he grabs your arm that? and pulls you out of the theater. Whoa. As you leave, you hear him shouting, See ya later, Iggy Pop. What? Iggy Pop? What? Call me Iggy Pop. <laughs> what could that be? Um, oh, yeah, I, 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 know. I, uh, I definitely know because I know the, the short list that, for. That's F word? Uh, Is he calling us an ass hasher? No. Hey, Georgie, do you like Iggy Pop? Wow. This is a horrible story. Yeah. So this is not your experience that you had. Not the same. This guy's very aggressive. No, not the R word, but. And I, you heard me say the F word, right? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. The other F word. It's also very confusing because, yeah, Misha's got it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But wow. it's kind of confusing because it's white trash. Yeah. Wow. Good oh, is oh, that I a first? See. Huh? I don't remember that ever popping up on our stories, even pre-hash. I guess. I'm glad I have it blocked. Yeah. The clown. Okay. That clown is confused. Yeah. Um, no, this is actually Dennis Rodman. Whatever you white trash, Iggy Pop looking motherfucker. Uh, I'd like to speak to the manager. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, a clown in the backwards baseball clap, uh, and then they go, what clown? There was never a clown here. And we're like, whoa! <laughs> this place is haunted. <laughs> the racist Scooby. haunted clown. <laughs> yeah, it's just a sort of a clown. He shows up sometimes, you know, it depends on the movie you're watching. He'll clamber to the back seat and <laughs> yell at you for the entire movie. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you the clown man drags you into the theater showing Sister Act 5, Saint No Jive. The clown man tells you to sit down and then proceeds to pull his pants down revealing his penis which is about 6 inches long. What? Then he begins to masturbate while pointing it at you. The oh, next no. day, you go back to the same cinema where you had been attacked by the clown. Why? Why, Why would we go back? Why yeah. would you go back? <laughs> Why did this Why? Man. It's about six inches long. Yeah, that's a loaded weapon, sir. Keep that away from me. Uh, Pee Wee Herman, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's literally the only clown I know that would do this. He was jacked for understand. 24 hours. I don't understand why Pee Wee Herman got busted. I thought people go to adult movie theaters to jack off. I think the one thing is, it's just like when you're like, uh, uh, when your fan base is children, you get grilled extra hard, yeah. So yeah, like, like were they there specifically to arrest him, or did he just caught up, get caught up in a sting? Possibly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because like, who would who would tattle on someone for doing that? Like... Uh, also, did you see? <laughs> have you ever seen the mugshots from him? He didn't look like anything. Like he had like long no. hair. He had a facial hair. Yeah. So. Uh, Fred Willard, who died recently, was also busted for being in doing the same thing in the theater. Rent it. So I think it's one of those things where it's illegal, <laughs> but they just don't enforce it. Kind of like speeding. Like, you know, they only pull over a very small percentage of people that actually speed. Yeah. And don't I know it. Uh, nice cock, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you got it? Yeah. But why do we go back? You got it's it, Jason, or like... you want me to get it? No, go for it. Okay. It sounds like I wouldn't go back to this movie theater. Yeah, I feel like Dennis Rodman's like, I'm gonna get this motherfucking clown back. Oh, I see. Nobody so pulls a penis. In. Good, huh? Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna get this clown back. Nobody does this to Dennis Rodman and gets away with it. Now we're gonna outweird that clown. Yeah. Yeah. This is like where the dollar shows is, and they sell pickles. And the pickle is just way up on the shelf. <laughs> what? That's like, that was Universal Theater. The Dollar Show. I don't know if you ever yeah, been there. And, and Warren, they had pickles. I swear to God. Pickles. But it was wow. like high up on the shelf. I was like, who the fuck comes to a theater, Wait. a Dollar yeah. Theater, and buys a pickle? And you, So you had to reach up for it yourself? No, no. It was like high 
It was like above the popcorn machines. Like I don't know uh, if anyone ever ordered it, but it was there. Like when you go to the when you go to Costco and there's stuff way on the top pallets, you're like, how do you even get to that stuff? Yeah. Hmm. You hold up a drawing oh, of the clown man's penis great, that Fizz. you drew and ask the staff if they recognize it. <laughs> Jed, the assistant manager, does. <laughs> he also recognizes the clown who assaulted you as the one who did the attack. Mm -hmm. mm, well, obviously, it's the same person. Y'all ready for this? Dick pick artist, yeah. Dick pick artist. <laughs> he, but in order, he's like the uh, the guy who does the, what's the chalking of the, uh, what's that called? Oh, the chalk outline? Yeah, or yeah, oh no, of the recreations oh, of the, people. The, why am I freezing on this now? Yeah. The, the, the police recreation artist. artist. There you go. Sketch, Sketch artist. Yeah. Yeah. It. He. He's able to do dicks too, but he has to draw eyes and a mouth on the penis. It's <laughs> just like a, look, yeah. a dick caricature. Or, like, have you ever seen Super Bad? Uh, Super Bad. Like, yeah, yeah. Where they all the drawings of dicks. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We needed to know. The clouds go down. You ask Jed for more information about the clown man. <laughs> you ask if he has any weaknesses or vulnerabilities. Jed explains that the clown is not smart enough to realize what he is doing, but then again he isn't stupid either. He states that the clown what? is a good mimic and can imitate almost anything, so a simple phrase such as, I'm sorry, could fool him. Mm. <laughs> What? <laughs> this is a crazy clown. He's like an idiot savant. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the manager, I can rec recognize that damn clown and penis anytime. <laughs> yeah. So that's why they let him get away with it. They go, listen, <laughs> he's just not smart enough to realize he's jacking off at you. So just say you're sorry. <laughs> Apparently Disney Plus is going to make a uh, Sister Act 3. You ask Jed what, what the clown's name is. It's it Frank real? Nitty, replies Jed. Frank Nitty? Whoa. That's something from a gangster movie. I yeah, think. Frank Nitty. What's that from? Nitty Gritty. Uh... Oh, he was a basketball player. Oh, Al Capone's oh, yeah? number two. <laughs> what team did he play on? I guess he was a basketball player. Like a, But he was also a gangster. Really? No, no, I mean, they were two different people. Oh. I didn't say that correctly. I mean, it sounds like you wouldn't have enough time to do both. Oh, he, su he Frank Nitti su succeeded uh, Al Capone in Chicago, and okay. he was in charge of all the money flowing through the, uh, through the operation. Hmm. Scary looking fellow. I bet. Imagine him with a clown mask or oh a, my God. a wig or something. He murdered defenses. Oh, there was a Sister Act musical in the 2000s? That sounds a little familiar. To this day, I have not seen the end of Sister Act 2. I just saw the beginning. Imagine him jacking you up in a theater. <laughs> It's Frank Nitty. <laughs> I'm sorry. You post pictures of the clown penis all around town with a number to call if anyone has any information. You get all call from Frank Nitty. Oh, Nitty oh. the clown starts to come through the phone. It's like a oh, nightmare. No. You back into the corner as he traps you in your bedroom. You scream oh, and cry until the police arrive. Oh. Oh, I said he started to come through the phone. Oh, ew. No. Ew. <laughs> Do you know this penis? Next time the AI kills us, just say I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is getting creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Frank Diddy Chicago Bulls versus Dennis Rodman's Pistons. That would be awesome. <laughs> it looks like a nightmare on the Elm Street. That's exactly what I was thinking, yeah.
Oh, you're the person who's been posting clown penises all you over town. You gave Nitty you're, laughs you're and tells you, get ready right for my right. nitty bitties. <laughs> he pulls out his penis and testicles. He then puts them in a jar and leaves. Oh my god! <laughs> that is the ultimate. Wow. Oh yeah, I'm gonna pull off my penis and balls and there you go. Man, that took a left turn. Yeah. You're not gonna freight out nitty meaty. Yeah. He puts him with the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sighs> and they sat on the top shelf of a dollar store theater yeah. for years. Yeah, this is what they are. the AI. The AI is a fem feminist, it turns out. Oh, the general way. Yeah. They just, just keep appearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mom, no, no! Oh, yeah, I did see it. Uh, oh, no, I didn't censor penis. Not for me. Not well, on my screen. For moderators, I don't think it's set to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you could turn that off. I think that's all user You look too. at the penis and testicles in the jar very closely and softly say, I'm sorry, three <laughs> times. Greater than you, end of page. <laughs> well, end of end page. Of page. <laughs> you end of page. And turn the page. Uh, yeah. Oh, you have something, Jason? Uh, no, go for it. Yeah, he's kind of like a Beetlejuice character. Yeah. It's Diddy time! <laughs> How would you react if someone just... and then had a jar ready, and then just gave it to you, and walked away? Shake the jar and make a wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you shake the jar, the penis gets more and more erect. Uh. Oh, it's snowing in the jar. Wow. <laughs> and then the genie comes out and goes, I will grant you three wishes. But I would like to reserve the last wish to free me from this clown's penis. <laughs> Please. Think we need Elliot Dust to get rid of the jar? Oh, he brought that Al Capone. Okay. Exercise the jar. Ah. Oh. We need an old clown. You and you open clown. your eyes. The penis is staring at you with its one eye. What is thy bidding, master? It asks you. Whoa. Greater than you give it a kiss, you put your lips against the tip of the penis and gently suck on it. <laughs> it tastes oh. funny, like rubber. Oh, you feel strange, like something is missing, but you don't know why. You look at yourself in the mirror and see a little girl kissing her doll. <laughs> no! Why do you feel this way? Why is this a nightmare? Oh my god. Why is this a constant wow, nightmare? Wow, it's really... He goes... Huh. Three, I mean, four, it, it's like it would be like uh, like uh, the fact that it's detached from the body is really what makes it extra disturbing. It's and, like it's like a cadaver penis, and that we see a ghost girl holding a doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I dare Hong Kong horror cinema to do any better than that. <laughs> you better hope your relatives don't watch the show. Oh no, yes, yeah, something something is missing. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Come play with us. Oh my god, please just leave. <laughs> yeah. Come play with us, Dennis Rodman. Wait a second, is that a cloud penis in a jar? We'll just, you know, we'll head back to the hotel. We were gonna murder you with axes, but... That is way too fucked up for us. I like how it, tell, it told us how it tasted, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly how I think. Rubbery. <laughs> yeah. A little rubbery. A little, little rubbery. rubbery. Yep. Tastes a that little funny. Ah, ah. That would have been my guess. Wah, wah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you say, lead me to Frank Nitty. Let you tell me. the penis in the jar. Oh, yeah, what's this? And never tell anyone about what just happened. <laughs> when you wake up, you find yourself in your room. There is no penis in the jar anymore. Uh -oh. Instead, oh. there is a small black cat with a human face sitting beside you. Oh. What the hell am I supposed to do now? You ask the cat. Well, we've already gotten you out of trouble, so you should be fine. Here, real quick. Oh, you got it, Jim? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah, that's crazy. Is it <laughs> Michael Bix? <Bixby. laughs> Good callback, yeah. That really, that story really resonated with a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ask the cat, where is Frank Nitty? The cat looks at you and slowly shakes its head. We don't have time for this. Let's play. Uh-oh. Let's play. Yeah, that sounds... Nitty's friends are a sent sentient penis and a human-faced cat. Yep, that's about right. Mm-hmm. You play with the pussy. It feels really nice. You start licking oh. and sucking on it. Oh boy. The cat doesn't seem to mind though. Oh no. Oh wait a minute. Wait, doesn't seem to mind, isn't though. that isn't that too Oh my god, that's even more disgusting. Uh uh It doesn't that count as two whoopies? No, no. The penis the penis one, definitely. But you were just kissing the tip. Yeah. No, we were sucking on it, I thought. Mm. Are you gonna make me go back? Yeah, you, you, you put your lips oh, you against it. Oh, you put the penis and gently suck on it. I'll track that one, but this one for sure, no. Man. Yeah, it sounds like we're just looking and sucking on the cat itself. Wow. <laughs> get caused by, get caught by nosy journalists. Yeah. Don't worry, Twitch. It's just a cat. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh. This is a fetish episode. Mm. We're not. Uh, mm. Somebody's fetish, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Like we should. We, we should do a fetish episode. Yeah. We just lean real hard into it. Yeah. Like I they all were. <laughs> yeah. Every episode prior was my fetish. Okay. Yeah. Wholesome. This is like uh, Sailor Moon, with mm -hmm. her black cat sidekick. <laughs> Her sidekick was named Sidekick? Hmm. No. Okay. It was, not, it was her sidekick. Detachable penis. That was a real song. Yeah, was that Primus? Uh, I want to say no, but it might be. Okay. They did Winona's Big Brown Beaver. So. Oh, yeah. I love, I've seen Primus live. They're great. Oh, their yeah. drummer was amazing until he left. Yeah. Hmm. How was this like Sailor Moon? Good question, Riddler. That's a great. The Sailor Moon had a black cat with her. That had a human uh, face? Mm, no, it had human qualities. What is the story of Sailor Moon? I don't even know. I don't really know. I you used to watch line, it like every day and I still don't know. Yeah. There's a cat. There's a talking cat. You're a star girl living in the sky. You want to, but you don't want to get sued for copyright infringement all the time. Uh, well, let's see. Oh, yes. For people that don't know, Mr. Allen's is a chain of shoe stores here in Detroit. Mm hmm. 29, a two for 50. 29, 29 a two for 50. 50. The cat takes to you to Nitty's lair in an abandoned Mr. Allen's shoe store. Nitty himself is a big fat guy wearing only a pair of tidy whities. Oh. Come here, boy. I want to show you how I make these things. <laughs> you walk into Nitty's lair. A large bowl sits on oh. a table covered with various objects. On top of the bowl is a small bottle of some red liquid. Mm. Oh, that's just Kool-Aid. The blood's in the cabinet behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, tuxedo mask, the weirdest. Like, does he actually do anything? It's always the girls that are saving the day. Tuxedo mask is just like, we need a hunky, mysterious guy. Never trust someone who calls their homo lair. That, if that's a, not a PSA, that's a PSA yeah. for the ages. Yeah. Man, people, people dropping wisdom all over the place in this stream. Mm -hmm. It's an all-timer. I really hope that's just catch up. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> oh, that's polished for my red nose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ask We're Frank trying, Mitty, Riddler. what is the red liquid for? You see the cat rub itself against Frank's leg. Frank Nitty smiles and points at the bottle of red liquid. That's the stuff that makes these things grow bigger and better looking. Frank Nitty begins what? to eat you. You what? try to fight back, but Frank what? Nitty is too strong. His teeth sink deep into your flesh. Oh. Soon you are nothing but a pile of meat. What the fuck? What? Did we die? Did I get us no, killed? No, wait, 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 wait. Okay. It's too strong. Now I imagine I'm like that um, John Liguizamo character in Spawn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we gotta tell Say him. Say, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what things is he talking about that makes the things grow? I think his genitals. <laughs> his detachable genitals. While he's typing, I'm gonna look up detachable penis. I want to say Sebadoa or Pavement. Oh, King Missile. It's actually a pretty decent song, I think. I'll post it in the chat here for people that want to listen to it. What? Detachable Penis. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Riddler recommends some animes. Two v two. Detachable penis. Who sings that? King Missile. Oh. King Missile. Inside Frank's stomach, you see a flesh basketball court. Michael Jordan <laughs> dribbles over a testicle-looking basketball <laughs> and says, "All right, Dennis, we got to two v two for our lives." Suddenly, uh -huh. Frank Nitty stops eating you and turns to you. Oh no, you're not going to be able to beat me. I'll be much stronger than you think. Whoa. Come on, let's go to mm. the game. You follow Frank Nitty outside. You walk alongside him. Suddenly Frank Nitty suddenly grabs you and throws you onto the ground. What the hell? I think I got confused. I thought Frank was eating himself so he could play basketball inside his own stomach. Yeah. yeah. That's not in the rules, yeah. This game's a bit of a mindfuck, boys. Mm hmm. I don't know, let's ask the ref. Ref? And the ref is just a clown's penis and he goes, FAIR! <laughs> <laughs> We're like, that's cool. Anime is manga, but animated? Maybe. A lot of animes yeah. come from manga. Yeah. Manga. Yeah, throw out some recommendations. I did watch Cycle Mob. Uh, what's the other one? Boxing. Oh, Hajime no Ippo or Megaloboxer? Megaloboxer. I yeah, that. was it good? I said to watch Megaloboxer. Yeah, I'm, I'm into it. Yeah. Junji Ito fan? Is that a creator or a name of an anime? It is. You kick Frank Nitty off you. You yell at him saying, I'm sorry. You continue, oh. I'm sorry you're a bitch. Then you give Michael Jojo. Jordan a high Jojo's five. Michael Jordan walks yeah. away. 
Hey Michael, remember when you were in 7th grade and you had a crush on me? Michael Jordan <laughs> looks at you and nods. I thought yeah. you'd understand, but you didn't. I guess I was wrong about you. Then you hug Michael and kiss him goodbye. Whoa, we're close with Michael. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jojo and Fist of the North Star. Fist of the North Star is kind of an older one, but it's yeah. about this guy. Uh, it's just like so crazy. He's like such a badass. And like he's trying to get back his girlfriend or something who was kidnapped by this. And they're like... I I've heard of Attack of Titan on well, uh, Attack on Titan. That's very good, but also very sad. Oh, okay. Uh, JoJo's like uh, an animated version of uh, Fast and the Furious. It's just like crazy, <laughs> another crazy like action one, and it's very stylized. And I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, see, Magic Shopping Arcade Abenobashi. It's like it's like a mashup. It's weird. It has like all kinds of different genres. Like every show is like a different genre. It's almost like sliders, but with an anime. Yeah, Bad Max with martial you arts. You use That's your rebounding to power to regrow your body, side. including all of your tattoos. Mm -hmm. You begin to laugh and smile. You turn around and walk home. Oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you take a car? I mean, we're rich, aren't we? Are we? Oh, we're Dennis Rodman. We're Dennis yeah. Rodman. I mean, we're poor in spirit, from what I've read. I was reading the story that said James Corden, the tele TV host, is kind of like a dick in real life. I believe it. Yeah, I believe it. I guess I never thought about it, but I guess he is. Like you said, Jim, if enough people say something, it becomes the truth. People will believe it. Oh, yeah. Well, sure, it doesn't become the truth, it becomes a belief. Okay, good. That's a better way of putting it. I'm very singing today. Oh, we should have called the, the dick the peeny genie. Ah, uh, the peeny genie? Yeah. And I could have granted wishes. Oh, well, another day. Tony's your mic quieter. It's not too late. Oh, yeah, I, I had it down. Sorry. You get home and go right to bed. <laughs> Today's been a long day. As you close your eyes, you hear a honking noise coming from under your bed. Oh. You jump out of bed and run down the stairs to investigate. You open the door to your room and see a weird creature standing in front of you. Its head is shaped like a clown's, but its mouth is wide oh, enough to no. fit a horse's mouth. Oh. Its eyes are huge and red, like firecrackers. What? <laughs> Nay. Its mouth is wide enough to fit a horse's mouth. So it's wide enough to open mouth kiss a horse another horse. It's is your refrigerator running? You better go catch it. <laughs> <laughs> JoJo is different each part yeah, like each season's a different like uh, Oh okay. Uh Generation of the JoJo fam uh, Jones Star family, but then the bad guys always Dio Brand, who's the biggest asshole in the universe, and they really set him up to be like very quickly. They're like no redeeming qualities whatsoever. He's just e pure evil. Like Japanese manga and anime, is it aimed at adults more than kids in Japan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they, yeah, don't consider it just for kids. Yeah. You it's inspect like, its penis. You don't recognize it and it's about five <laughs> inches. What do you want? You ask the creature. I want your dick because I need a ride home. The creature laughs and runs off. What? You stand in the middle <laughs> wow. of the street and stare at the monster as it goes by. It God seems it. so real. It was just a prank. <laughs> I know, he, did, he had no respect for you. Fucking neighborhood kids. Get off my lawn. Little penises have no respect these days. <laughs> Jojo sounds like some Japanese man took weed. Yeah. Jojo. Jo jo you realize it has taken your penis. You chase after him. Oh, Greater just, than you chase after jo the monster, you run after the monster. 
It disappears behind a row of houses. No. You run past them and then stop. You sit down and stare at your crotch for a while. Finally you decide to call it quits. Uh. You get dressed and leave the house. You walk alongside the road until you reach the next town. Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> or Chicago, I don't know which way we're going. Yeah. <laughs> Use your stand, Michael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Auburn Hills. <laughs> Time to go live at the palace. Take us home, Tony. Sounds like we've been defeated. Take it to the hole. Slam dunk. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Kool Aid Man. Just got redeemed. Oh, okay. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is Kool Aid Man again? He just comes in and says, oh, yeah. Yeah. You sit in the stands at Auburn Hills and think about the good old days. Then the cooling <laughs> man bursts through the wall. And you kill him instantly because you think he's Frank Nitty. Surely he could save us, yeah. Yeah, the Kool-Aid man retrieved our penis. He could be the savior. Oh yeah, I got your penis back, Dennis Rodman. Oh yeah. It's probably the... What did the guy have, like a jar of red liquid? It's probably Kool-Aid. <laughs> oh yeah now looking back it makes it makes all the sense in the world now <laughs> kool-aid man breaks through the wall and goes line what <laughs> what do i say oh kool-aid man is the clown no i don't look good to there i'm a clown though Ooh, kool-aid man is a villain i like that idea mm -hmm. uh. you see something shining in the ditch it is a 12 inch penis in a jar <laughs> you can have me if you dye your hair red the penis tells you you agree. Cool Aid Man bursts through a wall as you put on your new penis and yells, Oh yeah. He starts Aww. running towards you screaming, Get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh my god, it feels so good. He runs up to you and kisses you passionately. Whoa. I love your cock baby. He pants. Oh. You are speechless. You look at his penis and say, Wow, you made my dick hard. <laughs> wow. And that's, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> the awesome? Is that a wholesome, guys? <laughs> uh, yeah, the end. Uh, the end. This is it, chapter it. three. Oh, wow. God. Man, starts... I did not expect that. I never thought of, of the Kool-Aid man's penis until right now. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I love your cock, baby. He pants. He's speechless. Give me the fuck out of, out of here. <laughs> it's made out of glass, you know. Oh my god, it feels so good to reunite Dennis Rodman with his big penis. Wow, I didn't think the Kool-Aid man would do that such a thing, but yeah. he, there you go. That's why it's a reward. That's right. Tell your step clowns to subscribe or follow. Uh, we're so close to 100, guys. So yep. Mm -hmm. Tell your Kool-Aid man. It'll make such a difference. Follow. Everything will change once we get to 100. Our lives will be better. We'll all be happier all the time. Yeah. And also, if uh, if you haven't Step mummy, if you haven't seen, we have an Oprah reward. So if we get there, oh, the... we're four percent. Guys, we put in there. a lot of work oh, yeah. in getting Oprah to agree to. I'm you gonna know, donate to the Oprah. Yeah, Oprah will right read all of our stories for us. Rem Give remember your, your, for your uh, yeah, remember your spirits. Yeah. Uh, all right. See you guys tomorrow at eight. Peace. Good night, everybody.